So a quick recap. We were given X and Y, which is year and sales for that particular year. And then we were asked to predict the sales for the next couple of years, which is the next three years in this case. So what I realized is that the sales actually depend on the period. As the year increases, the sales increase in a certain value. What I try and understand is what is the rate of that increase? If I get the rate of that increase, I will be able to tell you for a per unit change in X, how much does Y change? For that, I found the value of BYX. Then I created a dependence of Y on X. I got that dependence of Y on X. And with the dependence of Y on X, I was able to find the Y, which is the sales for any given value of X, which is the period. Then at the end of it, I realized that eventually what I want is the dependence of y on x, which means this equation, which means an equation that looks like y is equal to a plus bx. Sir, why not x is equal to? Because we are never going to talk about x's dependence on y. We are only going to talk about y's dependence on x. So now if this is what is required. I am not going to do the BXY, BYX. I am directly going to say, well, you know, when we use that approach, we use that approach when there is an X dependent on Y and a Y dependent on X. So for Y dependent on X, we find BYX. For X dependent on Y, we find BXY. And then like we formed an equation for Y on X, we form an equation for X on Y. But I have said this, I don't know how many times and you all must also have been bored that we are never going to talk about the dependence of x on y. We are only going to talk about y on x. So if you are only going to talk about y on x, this is the only one equation that I'm going to find. So I'm going to go back and I'm again going to do the entire question. But now with a slightly different understanding or a slightly different approach. And the approach is, again, the year is given to you and your sales figures are given to you. Okay, let me quickly write down the question, the year along with the sales figures. So the year starting from 2001, right up till 2007. The sales are 80, this is in thousands, but I'm not writing that. I will write that down eventually. 90, 92, 83, 94, 99, 92. Correct? Now I'm going to say, I'm not going to say the BXY, BYX and all of that. I'm just going to say that this is X and this is Y. So what do I have to estimate? Y. For a given value of X. For the next three years, they want you to find the value of Y. Find them. So you basically want the dependence of Y on X. So you know what you want? A linear relationship, which is y is equal to a plus bx. This is what I want to achieve. And if I achieve this, which is if I achieve the values of a and b, for any given x, I can find y. But how will I get the values of a and b? I'm going to use these values of x and y to find the value of a and b. How? I'm going to create an equation. Well, it's already created. Not this. This is what I want. To reach this, what am I going to do? Step one. I'm going to take summations on both sides. Why summations? Because Y is not just one value. You know, Y is a lot of values. X is also a lot of values. Taking summation on both sides, I have Y is equal to A plus BX. Sum of Y is sum of A plus B X. Now, if you've done summations before and you understand summations, fantastic. If you've not, I will give you a little bit of a gist. Summation is basically adding. Now, see here you are adding. Now, adding is an operation where you add first and then add or add first and then add doesn't matter. So, summation splits over positive and negative signs. So, when I open the bracket up, this becomes sum of A plus sum of B X. But what is A and what is B? A and B are these constant values which in our case were, where did that go? Which in our case were A was minus 3918 and B was 2. 
these are the a and b that we are trying to find so a and b are not multiple values a and b are only one values x and y are multiple values so a summation of y i understand there are multiple y's that i you want me to add but there are no multiple a's so what are you going to add a a a a a a, a. how many times if you are going to add it four times then you write it 4a if you are going to add it five times then you write it 5a if you are going to add it six times then you write it 6a here can i assume that i am going to add it n times as many values of y those many times i will add a so this will become n a constant values do not follow summations now this is b x you know what that means the value b is multiplied by every value of x and then i add it so let me write this here you know how that is going to look it is going to be b into x1 then b into x2 then b into x3 then b into x4 and i am going to add all these values that is what it means by summation of bx but you tell me one thing isn't b a constant value then remove it out no doesn't that become b x1 plus x2 plus x3 so doesn't that become b outside and isn't this the sum of x so we pull the b out and we say summation of bx is b sum of x and this is the first equation that we are going to use to estimate the values of a and b how you have an x you have a y so you can take a sum of y and a sum of x you know n which is the number of readings what is missing a and b fantastic i need relationships in a and b so that i can solve them and find the values of a and b but sir there is a problem and that is well, the problem is that there are two values that are missing a and b i can't use just one equation i need one more so what am i going to do i go back to my original equation and that was y is a plus b x and now i multiply this equation throughout by x why x because x is the independent variable correct y is dependent x is independent and that is why we multiply throughout by x and now what take summation both sides sum of x y is sum of ax plus bx square sum of xy which means a total of all xy product is equal to summation inside summation ax plus summation bx square so sum of xy is a comes out summation x the same logic that i applied here and b comes out sum of x square and this is a second relationship in a and b multiply x y substitute it here sum of x substitute here sum of x square substitute here and there you have two relationships in a and b we are going to use these two relationships to find the values of a and b once you have a and b for any given value of x i will find you y so let's go back what i'm going to do is i'm going to write this down on a fresh page and that is i'm not going to write down the entire calculation do you require to know it you don't require to know it none of the questions required to know you this but what do you require to know three things number one this is what i want to achieve number two i am going to achieve it using this and using this these three equations are extremely important without these three equations you won't be able to one two and three so i am going to write down these three equations and that is i am trying to achieve a y is equal to a plus b x how with one equation sum of y is n a plus b sum of x and the other equation is sum of x y sorry is equal to a sum of x plus b sum of x square this is my equation number 1 and my equation number 
So what all do I need? I need a sum of y, I need a sum of x, I need a sum of x, y, sum of x and sum of x square. Can I ask you something? Did we just find this in the previous method that we did the question? We did. We have all of this. I'll tell you what all we have. We have a sum of x, we have a sum of y, we have a sum of xy and we have a sum of x square. Then why find anything, no? Just write it down as in how it is for now. So, sum of x, I'm writing down everything. The sum of x was 14028. Sum of y was 630. Sum of xy was 126, 25, 76. And lastly, sum of x square was 281. 12140. If you have everything already, then why wait? Let's start substituting. Equation 1. According to equation 1, sum of y is Na plus B sum of x. Sum of y is 630. So 630 is n. What is n? The number of readings, which in this case is 7. 7a plus b sum of x. Sum of x is 14028. So if I write all this on this side and the 630 on the other, this is how it will look like. 7a plus 14028b is equal to 630. And this is going to be my first simultaneous linear equation. Where is the second equation coming from? Here. How? I'm going to say my second equation is sum of xy is equal to a sum of x plus b sum of x square. The sum of xy was 126, 25, 76 is equal to a sum of x was 14028 plus b sum of x square was 281 1, 2, 1, 4, 0. I am going to write this on that side and this on that side so this will become 14028a plus 281 1240b one, one, is equal to 126257 6. This is my second equation in the end. B. I know this looks cumbersome. I know it feels cumbersome. I just want you to humor with me and play along. I'm going to write the two equations together because I have to solve them. Let's start writing down the first equation. 7a plus 14028b is equal to 630 and 14028a plus 2811240b is equal to 1262576. Now, how do you solve a simultaneous equation? By making one of the variables the same. The problem is which variable the same? Everything looks very high and very complicated. It's okay. 714028. Check if 7 can be made 14028. How? Divide 14028 by 7. So 14028 divide that by 7. And the answer is 2004. Fantastic then. Do one thing. Multiply the first equation by 2004. What will happen if you multiply the first equation by 2004? If you multiply the first equation by 2004, you will have an equation that looks like 2004 into 7 is 14028a plus 2004 into, so 2004 into 14028 will give you a 28112112. B is equal to 2004 into 630 will give you a 
वन टू सिक्स टू फाइव टू जीरो दिस इज माई न्यू इक्वेशन दैट कम्स फ्रॉम यूर एंड माई सेकेंड इक्वेशन विल दैट रिमेन्स द सेम विच इज वन फोर जीरो टू एट ए प्लस टू एट वन वन टू वन फोर जीरो बी इज इक्वल टू वन टू सिक्स टू फाइव सेवन सिक्स now that i have one variable the same what i can do is i can start solving this simultaneously so same you cancel i will subtract cancel 1281212 do you agree everything up till here is the same so this will directly cancel everything out what will remain is 40 and 12 this is 12 minus 40 12 minus 40 is 28. B is equal to but negative because smaller number subtracted from greater number. Or you can do it in the calculator as and how you want to. Here also, if you notice, up till the 20 and 76, everything is the same. So from 76, when you subtract 20, you basically get 56 but negative. Take the B on the other side. Negative negative becomes positive. 28 B is 56. Take the twenty-eight on the other side. B is fifty-six by twenty-eight, or B is equal to two. Will you find the value of B? Yes. Hadn't we also found the value of B? What was our value of B some time ago? Well, our value of B some time ago was also two. Wasn't this our value of B? the coefficient of x let's substitute the value of b and find the value of a so i am taking one of the two equations the one equation is this which is 7a plus 14028b is equal to 630 so 7a plus 14028 into 2 is equal to 640 In the next step, seven a. This will have to multiply one four zero two eight into two. One four zero two eight into two will give you a plus two eight zero five six is six forty. Goes on the other side and subtracts will become negative. So minus six thirty. Sorry, this is six thirty. Made a mistake. So I will get seven a is a negative. Two seven four two six. Divide that by seven, and you will get a negative three nine one eight. Wasn't that our value of a as well? Wasn't that our value of a, which is negative three nine one eight? Now that we have the value of a and b, let's substitute it into our equation. Y is equal to a plus b x. When I substitute, y becomes a, which is negative three nine one eight, plus b, which is two x. Or you will write it as y is two x minus three nine one eight. You have your equation of y's dependence on x. Substitute any value of x, you will get the value of y. <laughs> so at the end of the day the bottom line is finding this equation if the bottom line is finding this equation then how i do it doesn't matter if i do it the byx method or if i do this method doesn't matter what i'm going to do now is i'm going to stop here and i'm going to come back to my question so that is so right now i have tried to find the equation in two methods i'm writing down the question again which is here and sales My year was two thousand and one, two thousand and two, two thousand and three, two thousand and four, two thousand and five, two thousand and six, two thousand and seven. And the sales were, the sales given to us were ninety, sorry eighty, ninety, ninety-two, eighty-three, ninety-four, ninety-nine, and ninety-two. 
do you agree that no matter what calculation we do or what method we choose if we choose this method which is making two equations in a and b and solving them or we use the previous method where we are actually trying to find the value of dx y and dy x no matter what method you choose do you agree that in either of the two methods the question becomes extremely cumbersome for one reason that we are squaring x we are multiplying x with y and because x is a very big value the square of x becomes a very big value and multiplying x with anything also becomes a very big value just give me a second let me see where that disappear here squaring x multiplying x with y becomes a very big value well this is where we come to a concept called shift of origin what did the concept say the concept says that if you shift the origin of any one variable from where it is to a new origin their relationship and their dependence still remains the same now if you've done again if you've done math 11 to 12 if you've done uh, uh, foundation then you understand what shift of origin is if you don't i'll tell you nothing this is here this is what i consider as my x i don't do that anymore because the x is very big i will say my x is not here my x is the year minus 2000 from the year i am subtracting 2000 why do you notice the year is 2001 2002 2003 2004 2005 but sir you are changing data i agree i am changing data but can you just humor me and play along because a you don't have a choice you have to play along and b I've been boring you for like uh, one and a half hour, one and a half hour, like one, one, three, three and a half, four hours now. So now that you are into it for so much, you might as well hang on and continue. When I subtract the year and create a new, usually I took this as X. Now I'm changing my X. Sir, why are you changing data? To make calculations easier, play along and humor me. This will become one, this will become two, three, four, five, six, seven. What about my sales? That remains as Y, that is not changing. Do you agree my x has become very small? Now immediately, without any explanations. What are we looking for? Three equations. We are looking for the equation y is equal to a plus bx. For that, we are looking for sum of y is na plus b summation x and sum of xy is a summation x plus b summation x square. So can I say basically I have to find an xy and I have to find an x square but with a changed x and not the year. So let's start doing that. Let's start taking a sum of x, sum of y. Now sum of y is not changing. This remains at 630. What will this become? This will become, if you want to do this, 10, 20, 30, 30, point. Or I'll do it for you. It is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 is a total of sorry 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 28 sorry i made a mistake there let me check that again 7 plus 3 is 10 6 plus 4 is 10 oh yeah i counted the 3 already sorry 10 20 25 and 3 is 28 correct sorry my bad i need an xy 80 into 1 is 80 now i don't need a calculator for this if you do go ahead 80 into 1 is 80 80 into 1 is 80 and then use the memory 80 into 1 is 80 add that to memory then we have 90 into 2 is 180 add that to memory then we have 92 into 3 is 276 add that to memory then we have 83 into 4 we get 332 add that to memory then we have 94 into 5 I get 470 add that to memory 99 into 6 is 594 add that to memory and lastly 92 into 7 is 644 add that to memory recall memory the answer is 2576 x square 1 square is 1, 2 square is 4, 9, 16, 
twenty-five, thirty-six, forty-nine. So one, uh, one plus four plus nine plus sixteen plus twenty-five plus thirty-six plus forty-nine is a total of a hundred and forty. Now what? We start creating our first equation, and that is sum of x is n a. Plus b sum of sorry sum of y is n a plus b sum of x. Sum of y is still six thirty. N is seven a plus b sum of x is twenty eight. So if I write this here and that there, I get seven a plus twenty eight b is six thirty, and this is my first equation in x and A and B. Similarly, I will create my second equation from where? From sum of x y is a sum of x plus b sum of x square. Sum of x y is two five seven six is a sum of x is twenty eight plus b sum of x square is one forty. If I write this together, twenty-eight a plus one forty b is two five seven six. This is my second equation in A and B. We have to solve them together now. Let's write them together. Seven a plus twenty-eight b is six thirty, and twenty-eight a. Plus one forty b is two five seven six. This is one, and this is two. Seven can be made twenty eight. So I am multiplying seven by seven ones are seven, seven twos are fourteen, seven threes are twenty one, seven fours are twenty eight. I am multiplying this by four. If I multiply that by four, what do I get? Seven into four is twenty eight a plus twenty eight into four. Twenty eight into four will be. Hundred and twelve B is equal to six thirty into four is two five two zero. The second equation doesn't change. Twenty eight A plus one forty B is two five seven six. Subtract, subtract, and subtract. Cancel. What does this become? This becomes a negative twenty-eight b is equal to a negative fifty-six. Negative negative cancels. Twenty-eight goes on the other side. B becomes two. Can you get the same value for b? And you will. You know why? Because no matter even if your data changes from two thousand one, two thousand two, two thousand three to one two three four five six, you know what is basically happening? The rate of change is remaining the same. Here also, this is changing by one. This also is changing by one. So eventually, the verdict remains the same. That for a per unit change in x, the change in y is two units. That is b. Let's find the value of a. How will I do that? I will substitute this value of b into a new one of the two equations. So I'm taking the first equation, and that is 7a plus 28b is equal to 630. Now I know the value of b should be 2, so let me start substituting. 7a plus 28 into 2 is equal to 630. 7a plus. What is 28 into 2? 28 into 2 is 56 is 630. 56 goes to the other side and subtracts. 7 is 630 minus 56 is 574. 7 goes on the other side and divides. A becomes 82. Do you notice the value of A has changed? Yes. 
So if you shift your data, the value of B remains the same, but value of A changes. So my B here is 2 and my A here is 82. So my equation y is equal to a plus bx now becomes y is equal to 82 plus 2x or y is equal to 2x plus 82. What was my previous equation? My previous equation is y is equal to 2x plus 3918 if I am right. Yes minus 3918 this was your original equation and now this is changed to this let's start the prediction now what you have your value of x on y sorry y on x now for any given value of x you can find y where did we stop they stopped at 2007 they want the data for the next three years fine then let's try for 2008 for 2008 I will get y is 2 into 2008 plus 82. Y is 4016 plus 82. Y is 4098. So for the next year, the value of y is 4098. Listen to yourself. Listen to this. This sounds so stupid. Up till the year 2007, the demand was 92. And then in the year 2008, the demand became 4098. There's something terribly wrong. You know what is wrong? Your substitution of 2008 is wrong. What is 2008? Year. Is X year? No. X is 2000 and year minus 2008. So for 2008, can I substitute X as 2008? That's wrong. So I'm going to say for 2008, X is 2000, the year minus 2000. So X becomes 8. Now can I substitute this? Definitely yes. Y is equal to 2 into 8 plus 82 y is equal to 16 plus 82 and y is equal to 98. Isn't this the same answer that we got some time ago? Wasn't this the same answer that we got for 2008 which was 98? Isn't this also the same? But with a slightly different method so let me recap and tell you what I did. I said, because the x value is very big, we don't use it as x. We shift it. But how can I shift it? It's allowed. The dependence and the relationship remains the same. Just one thing. When you are now substituting, you will not substitute for x. You will substitute for the year minus whatever your shift is. I hope you understood whatever I have tried to do up till now because I'm again going to change it. So what we did was we took the data as and how it is, year as x and sales as y and we solved it, got very too big, very big equations. We still solved them, we got a, a relationship of y on x after having done that for any given value of x we found y. After that, I said, okay, if the values are so big, why not shift them? Is it allowed? Yes. Just remember that when you are substituting also, you have to shift them. So we shifted, we made a new x, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Did the same thing again. Got the values of a and b. b worked out to be the same. But a worked out to be a slightly different value, which is 82. And now when you get an equation, you get a slightly different equation than the original. But that's okay. Now when you subtract, substituting, you won't substitute for that year, you will substitute the year minus 2000 because that is how I've created my x. My question to you is, this shift that you did, which is you subtracted every year by 2000, was it told to you? 
did somebody come and tell you that subtract it by 2000 well in this case i told you subtract it from 2000 but then could i choose any number that i want to was there like a hard and fast as to what number should i choose no then you are going to choose a number that is going to make this extremely easy what are we going to do well again i am going to write down the question and say year and sales for the year 2001 2002 2003 2004 2005 2006 2007 sales were 80 I think I should have this by heart by now considering the number of times I've done this 80, 90, 92 83 94 99 92 Remember when I said let the sales be Y but don't take your as X create your own X How? By subtracting 2000 from everyone but that's okay now don't subtract 2000 subtract a different value what is this value this value is the average of the year what do you mean by average of the year take a total take an average and that should be your answer so let's take an average 2001 plus 2002 sorry plus 2003 plus 2004 plus 2005 plus 2006 plus 2007 1428 this total has to be divided by 7 what do you get 2004 so you are not going to subtract year by 2000 you are going to subtract year by 2004 and can I tell you how stupid you were to actually find the mean? It's simple. Aren't they equally spaced? So if I hide 3 from top and hide 3 from the bottom, isn't 2004 the exact center or the exact middle? And that is why I am going to subtract it from 2004. But why? I will tell you. Humor me. 2001 minus 2004 is a negative 3 negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Is that right? How will that help me? Am I doing anything new? No. In the previous question, I subtracted by 2000, here I am subtracting by 2004. So it's just that during the substitution I have to remember this. Everything else remains the same. I still have to find an xy, I still have to find an x square for substitution xy 8 3s are 24 so 240 but negative 9 2s are 18 so negative 180 sorry 92 into 1 is a negative 92 excuse my handwriting when i tend to talk a lot and then when my brain is working faster than my hand uh, this tends to happen 83 into 0 is 0 94 into 1 is 94 99 into 2 is going to be 99 into 2 is 198 and 92 into 3 is 276. Let's take a total. I'm taking a reverse total. I'm adding this first and then subtracting. If it is negative, you subtract. So this is going to be 276 plus 198 plus 94 plus 0 so that's okay minus 92 minus 180 minus 240 and the value is 56 similarly i have to take a sum of x and sum of y also so let me take that sum of y will still remain 630 we've done this like four times now sum of this if you notice negative 3 positive 3 will become 0 negative 2 positive 2 will become 0 negative 1 positive 1 will become 0 so 0 what does x square become 
negative 3 square is 9, 2 square is 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9. So I have 9 plus 1 is 10, 9 plus 1 is 10, 20, 20 plus 8 is 28. Same, I am not doing anything else. Same now, we will substitute into the two equations. Equation number 1 is sum of x, sum of y, sorry, is equal to na plus b sum of x. But now you tell me something, you worked a shift in such a way that the total became 0. And let's go back. If you are my foundation student, then I've done this with you. The sum of the deviations taken from the mean are always and always zero. If you take a mean of the year and then subtract every one by that mean, doesn't the sum become zero? And since sum of x becomes zero, let's come to this equation. Sum of y becomes Na plus P into 0 which becomes sum of Y is Na then what does A become? A become sum of Y upon N doesn't this just break the question into a very small unit where it is not even a simultaneous equation anymore the B is gone only A is left sum of Y 630 is 630 upon 7 which is 630 upon 7 is 90 this is the value of a what about the value of b we will find it using the second equation what was your second equation sum of x y is n a sorry uh, a sum of x plus b sum of x square but again, isn't sum of x 0? So what will this become? This will become sum of x y is 0 plus b sum of x square or sum of x y is b sum of x square or b sum of x square is sum of x y or b is equal to sum of x y upon sum of x square. Can't I directly find the value of b also without doing anything? There is no simultaneous equations involved. So won't I say b is equal to sum of x y is 56 divided by sum of x square is 28 which is 2. And I have said this time and again. No matter how you find it, b will always remain the same. What will change is the value of a. Forget that. Let's come and substitute into our equation. What is our equation? Our equation is y is a plus bx. So y is 90 plus 2x or y is 2x plus 90. A slightly different equation. Why? Because your shift was different. So now you will say for the year 2008 x is going to be the year minus 2004 so x is going to be 2008 minus 2004 x is going to be 4 common sense no this was do you notice it's increasing by 1 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 the next year will be 4 so this will be y is equal to 2 into 4 plus 90 or y is equal to 98 for the year 2008 which is again the same answer I have done the same question for you in four different methods and now I'm going to break it down to you how are we going to solve questions I'm going to solve each and every question for you let's go back let's refine this one last time I promise one last time and then move it ahead. What are we doing? Forecasting. Meaning, how much does your sales or your demand change for every given year? So we realize that the sales is dependent on the year. The first method of doing about this is find out how much is the sales dependent on the year. 
This we do by the method of finding the value of dyx and creating an equation, which is we find the covariance between x and y, we find the standard deviation of x square, substitute both of them into the formula and we get the value of dyx, which is the covariance between x and y divided by the standard deviation of x square, which is 8 by 4, which is 2. Once you find that, we have a regression equation of y on x. In that equation, substitute everything you have, y bar, x bar and dyx. You get the line of regression of y on x, which is going to be, hold on for one second. which is y is equal to 2x minus 3918. This is what we have to reach. This is what we have to achieve. How is y dependent on x? So if this is what we have to reach or this is what we have to achieve. Here we have not made any shifts, nothing. Once you achieve this, substitute the value of x and you will get the value of y. Problem, it's just too much to do. So we realize if we, this is what we have to find and there is never going to be an x on y in our case, then why are we doing all of this? We move on to the next method. What is the next method? The next method is, hold on for a second, let me put this in an order. The next method is by creating two equations with x and y. And that is here. What we say is, instead of doing all of this, We say instead of doing the bxy, byx, why not just find two equations. To achieve this, we create two new equations which will give us the value of that a and that b. Because once we have the a and the b, everything is done. Now to be able to do that, we need all these values, but we've already found them. So what we do is, we just substitute those values into the equations that we have. Once we substitute those values into the equations that we have, these are the two equations that we get. We solve them simultaneously. We solve them simultaneously to get the values of A and B. Once we get A and B, we create our equation. This is the same equation that you got because you took the data as and how it is. So again, we have got the same equation. There is nothing wrong with it. But the problem was because the value of X was too large, this was also a little hectic to do. Then we moved on and then we said, then do one thing shift the value of x and then do the same question. What do you mean by shift the value of x? Don't take x as the year. Create your own x by changing the year to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But sir, year is, we have to predict for 2008, 2009, 2010. That's okay. We will accordingly change our prediction values also. But then all the things that are required are the same. But now if you notice, the equations become much smaller. But I still have to simultaneously solve them. I simultaneously solve them. I again get values of A and B. And this time, I get slightly different values of A and B. The value of B remains the same. The value of A becomes 82. I substitute this, I get my equation. But now remember, your X is not year. Your X is the year minus 2000. So subtract that and substitute, you will get your answer. And then we come to the third and the last method, which actually got finished in one page itself. We didn't need another page. And that said, if the shift wasn't told to you, then why not shift it from the center? If you shift it from the center, the sum of x becomes zero. And if sum of x becomes zero, then a can be directly found by sum of y upon n, and b can be directly found by sum of x, y upon sum of x square. Once you have a and b, you form your equation. But remember that x is not the year. x is the year minus 2004. So whatever year you are predicting for, always remember to substitute the year as the, sorry, x as the year minus 2004 and then substitute. The final answer works out to be the same. And all questions have to be done using this method. So there are two basic methods that we did and that is both by forming equations but one by forming equation without shifting and one by forming equations with shifting.
the thing about forming equations with shifting is that it becomes so easy that you get an answer very quickly does it declare in the exam how you have to solve it no it's up to you how you want to solve it what i'm going to do now is i want you to pull out the sheet that i have given you in that sheet in the beginning there are a few things written about the direct and the indirect method we are going to run through them and then i'm going to tell you how to do questions or how to go about questions demand forecasting calculating the trend the trend can be calculated by the least square method as follows so the method that we've done right now i haven't told you but it's called the least square method find the deviations of x of each period from a certain period and then find the sum of the deviations so sum of x square the deviation of each period x square and then find the sum sum of x square multiply the deviations by y and then find the product x y to find y this is the equation a plus b x the value of a and b may be determined by either of the following ways direct method what did we do if the sum of x is 0 then you can use the direct method if the sum of x is 0 then to make sum of x 0 it is necessary for the time deviation should be calculated exactly from the midpoint of the series then the values of a and b will be calculated as a which is the average is sum of y upon n and b which is the rate of growth remember i told you the rate of change of y with respect to per unit change in x is given by the sum of x y upon sum of x square directly that is why the direct method or the indirect method what you can do is you can create these two equations solve them simultaneously and then find the values of a and b this is all that you have to do this is all that is required out of you so if you've not understood anything or whatever i've said which i hope you have if you've not understood anything or whatever you've said a lot of things that you think were too much to do it's okay this i hope is understood because this is what we have to do form these two equations solve a and b create your equation and then predict y for a given value of x if the data can be shift in such a way that it the total of x becomes zero then use the direct method and now i'm going to move into questions well the first question is already done by me so i'm just going to run through the question from the module because it's very well written in the module but it's just that they directly come to the shortcut method or the direct method and that is why i had to teach you all of this so that you understand where does the direct method come from so let's come to the solution of the first question which we've already done and the presentation will remain as and how the question is so the question says that uh, from the following time series data sales project the sales for the next three years so for the following time series data of sales project the sales for the next three years so from 2001 up till 2007 they want you to project the sales for the next three years so 2008 2009 2010 is what they want you to project so see what they've done year and time deviation from 2004 so basically you know what this is this is saying that my x is not the year my x is the year minus 2004 that is how we shifted where does this 2004 come from it is the average of the year once you shift sum of x becomes zero we find sum of y sum of x square sum of x y start substituting because this is the direct method they haven't really explained anything but i hope whatever i have said and done is understood where this comes from is also understood i will give it to you proper i will write it down in the next question properly we are trying to find the regression equation of y on x which is y is equal to a plus bx a works out to be 90 b works out to be 2 and with the help of that equation just remember one thing now when you are projecting you will not take the year 2008 as 2008 you will take 2008 as 4 they haven't clearly written it here next question onwards i will write everything down properly don't worry the year 2009 is 5 and the year 2010 is 6 
and that is how let me see if I can so 2008 becomes 4 I hope you can see that 2009 becomes 5 2010 becomes 6 so our answer is the same 98 100 and 102 and like I said it's stupid for you to continue finding because you know that the rate of change is 2 if the rate of change is 2 the, if the first prediction is 98 next is going to be plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 and so on I want you to understand the concept anybody can solve questions if you've done math plus 2 or if you've done FYBcom mathematics you had this in FYBcom also you had this in FYBcom SEM1 or SEM2 you had time series which is nothing new but understanding the concept is extremely important that's it that is question number one we now come to the next question so what I've done is uh, according to me it's question number one what is it in your module it is page number 11 question number one I want you to make a note of that so if you download a module or if you can if you already have the institute material that has come to you you can refer to these questions they are directly being picked up from the module I'm going to do the next question so I want to do directly question number five this is the question that is there I'm going to read the question and then we are going to do it what does the question say the question says based on the following data on the exports of an item by a company during the various years fit a straight line for the time being assume straight line is a good fit you know what this means fit a straight line is get a relationship of x on y in a line so y is equal to a x plus a plus bx is a straight line for the time being assume that straight line is a good fit sometimes it is not always a linear relationship like I'll give you an example population is not linear it's not that every year a certain number only increases population is exponential with every given year population doesn't just grow in a particular stipulated value it can grow in any way and that is why population is an exponential uh, relationship it is not a straight line relationship here they are saying assume that straight line relationship is a good relationship and give a forecast for the year 2013 and 2014 so the year data is given to you and the number of items is given to you we have to predict for the year 2013 and 2014 that is what they are expecting out of you if that is what they are expecting out of you let's start doing the question the first thing I'm going to do is write down the question so the data year is given to me I'll try and leave a line and write so that if there's anything extra to be written then we can so it is uh, 2004 2005 goes up till 2012 2006 2007 2008 2009 2010 2011 2012 what is given to you number of items so I am just going to write uh, or let me write number of items so that I don't take up too much place 13 20 20 28 30 32 33 38 43 done so let me get rid of the PDF now that the question is written down and there we have it so we have here and the number of items so usually I say year is X but I'm not going to do that you know what I'm going to do I'm going to create my own new X 
and what is this x going to be this x going to be the year minus the center now you can take a total and divide and find the center what is but then isn't it common sense 2004 2012 2005 2011 2006 2010 2007 2009 isn't 2008 actually your center so we are going to say x is or you can do it in your calculator huh? take a total divide by 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 that's your mean divided by 9 and you will have your value which is basically going to work out to be 2008 only so i am going to say my x is the year minus 2008 so 2004 minus 2008 is minus 4 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 4 I don't need to tell you that we have to find x y and x square that is in every question that is inevitable so the next thing I find is x y 13 into 4 but is negative so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to multiply 13 by 4 I know it is negative so I'm going to subtract it to the memory so that later I can directly get an answer and I hope that everybody knows how to use their calculator if you're my student you definitely know how to use your calculator because I've spent like an entire one session trying to explain to you how to use your calculator but if you're not my student and you're finding it difficult uh, well one of the zoom calls let me know and then we can see what I can do about it so let's start with 13 into 4 is 52 but negative subtract it from memory because it's negative then you have 20 into 3 is 60 but negative then we have 20 into 2 is 40 but negative then we have 28 into 1 is 28 but negative then we have 0 32 into 1 is 32 now positive so add it to memory 33 into 2 is 66 add that to memory 38 into 3 is 114 add that to memory and lastly 43 into 4 is 172 add that to memory recall memory according to me it should be 204 let me do a thing let me just draw a line below this so that it's easier to understand and let me just write here sum this is where I'm adding all the totals sum of x is going to be 0 anyway doesn't matter because 4 4 will nullify 3 3 will nullify 2 2 will nullify 1 1 will nullify and it's a shame that we are actually finding the total it is basic statistics the sum of the deviations from the mean is always and always zero so if you are shifting these values from the mean the total will always remain zero let's come to the sum of y because this is what my y is and this is my x so y will be 13 plus 20 plus 20 plus 28 plus 30 plus 32 plus 33 plus 38 plus 43 is 257 the last thing I need is the sum of all x squares so 4 square is 16 3 square is 9 4 1 0 4 9 sorry 1 4 9 16 so if you have to take a total 9 plus 1 is 10 16 plus 4 is 20 20 plus 10 is 30 30 30 60 I have all my values so let's proceed then to the rest so we have to substitute these into two equations so let me write down whatever I have I have a sum of x which has become 0 I have a sum of y which has become 257 I have a sum of xy which is 204 and I have a summation sum of x square 
which is 60. Fine. I have written down whatever I have. Now I start off with telling them or saying that I want to find the equation y is equal to a plus bx. For this, I am going to use two equations and one is sum of y is na plus b sum of x and the other is sum of xy is a sum of x plus b sum of x squared. And now you are going to say but since sum of x is 0 if I number this as 1 and I number this as 2 I will say from 1 we get that. What do we get from 1? We get that sum of y is equal to na plus b into 0. Sum of y is n or a is sum of y upon n and therefore a is what is sum of y 257 upon n which is I always forget to write the n the n is going to be 9 readings so which is divided by 9 so a works out to be now because you are dividing by 9 if it is not perfectly divisible it's going to be a very odd recurring decimal 257 divided by 9 is 28.555 so I am going to write it as 5 6 and then we go to from 2 we get sum of xy is equal to a sum of x which is 0 plus b sum of x square so I will get sum of xy is b sum of x square or can I say b is sum of xy divided by sum of x square or b works out to be sum of xy is 204 sum of x square is 60 so it's 204 divided by 60 so b works out to be 204 divided by 60 which is 3.4 3.4 which is 3.4 then you have the values of a and b the moment you have the values of a and b you are now going to say since a is 28.56 correct since a is 28.56 and b is 3.4 y is equal to a plus bx so y is equal to 28.56 plus b which is 3.4 into x or in other words 3.4x and this is my regression equation of x on y this is the st of y on x sorry this is the straight line fit of y on x once i have the straight line fit of y on x my next job or my duty now is going to be predicting the values of x for a given value of uh, for predicting the values of y for a given value of x they've asked you to do this for 2013 and 2014 so i'm going to say for the year 2013 x is going to be year minus 2000 and Eight. So x is going to be 2013 minus 2008 or x is going to be 5 which is common sense. What are the what is the period new period now? It is minus 4 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 4 then the next one is going to be 5. When I substitute that into my equation y is equal to 28.56 plus 3.4x y is equal to 28.56 plus 3.4 into 5 I'm going to finish it off in the calculator 3.4 into 5 plus 28.56 is a total of y is equal to 45.56 similarly 
for the year 2014 x is going to be year minus 2008 so x is going to be 2014 minus 2008 and I don't know how many times I've said this if this is 5 the next year is going to be 6 2014 minus 2008 is going to be 6 so I'm going to say the value of y is 28.56 <clears throat> plus 3.4x or y is equal to 28.56 plus 3.4 into 6 y is equal to 3.4 into 6 will be 20.4 add the 28.56 to that and you get 48.96 and this is your answer but always remember look at the question and then answer meaning in the question check what your y is is it y in these values or is it in thousands of values because then that way you have to write them in that form so when you look at your question you notice here it is written as number of items in thousands so when you write your answer down for whatever you have gotten it is not going to be 45.56 it is 45.56 thousands so you can multiply this by thousands and then give them the demand so when you multiply this by thousand this will become four five five six zero this will become 48960 always remember otherwise you will end up making a mistake so let's come back to the question and see what they are saying give a forecast for the year 2013 and 2014 what is the data about data based on I'm sorry data based on the following uh, data on the exports of items by a company during the various years so this is export of items on various years then the word problem should be written with a word answer completely then you are going to say therefore for the year 2013 the company will export 45560 items and for the year 2014 the company will export 48960 items and that is how we will finish the question so this is what is expected out of you to be written in the solution let me zoom in a little question shift the x to the middle value x y x square this explanation is important you know why uh, so remembering these two equations is very important if you can do the summation thing and find the two equations fantastic if you cannot then I would suggest uh, remember the equations directly is it required for you to prove the equations no but after this this has to be written I'll tell you why these questions are asked for six seven marks for seven marks there needs to be some writing no? and that is why you explain this to them that y is a sum of y upon n y is b sum of x y upon n you are not sitting in front of me so I cannot do a, I cannot ask these questions on your face I cannot walk through the rows like I usually do and hit you if you've written something wrong uh, and because of all that I hope you all are understanding whatever I'm doing I will definitely try and take a call after this so that I can ask you if there is anything that you've not understood or anything that you're having a problem with but yeah this is the solution that is expected you find a you find b once you found A, once you found B, you substitute into the equation and then predict for whatever they want. A word problem should have a word answer and that is why this is your final answer. We are going to quickly go back to the sheet and check how they have written it. So, this is how their solution begins. 
we can call the year x and exports y in order to use the normal equation for least squares line this we are going to declare we are going to say that let the uh, let x be the year minus whatever and let y be the uh, items exported the number of items exported then they have written this explanation this explanation is not required all this is not required we directly come to the table and our table is full enough you don't have to write anything it's just that they have directly written x because they have they have explained it here if you don't explain it here you create your own x by writing year and x is year minus 2008 they have gotten the x sum of x sum of y sum of x square sum of xy values i think this is wrong this is not going to be a negative 204 it has to be a positive 204 so either i have printed it wrong here or then it's wrong in the module either way please make that change after that this looks a little ugly in the previous question they wrote the equations as a and b here they've written as a0 a1 not required you write it as a and b standard is a and b this a0 and a1 is not really going to be required you can write them as a and b so we write them as a and b and then you explain so this is whatever explanation that i have done and the final answer for a is 28.56 and b is 3.4 which is correct now you substitute them into the equation create your equation and this is the equation make sure you highlight the equation double line it so that they know that this is your equation and then this is your answer which is so what they've done if you notice they've put three thousands and written numbers so they've written in thousands of units i have converted it to thousands either way is correct and this is your final answer this is how these questions are dealt with. We are two questions down and a lot more to go. Uh, I think a total of five or six questions to go. So five, we've done two, three more questions to go. Let's continue with the next question. The next question that I want to do is, uh, so now every question, sub question ka framework same. Kuch badalta nahi hai. Uh, so then let's do one thing let's do question number two then <clears throat> again question remains the same with the help of the following data project the trend of sales for the next five years so it stopped at 2007 so 8 9 10 11 12 is the next five years that they want you to find uh, fine then let's write down the question and then begin so let me quickly write down the question and then we will start so again year and sales in lakhs so year goes from 2002 up till 2007 so 2002 2003 2004 2005 2006 2007 sales in lakhs is 100 110, 115, 120, 135, 140. Done? I have written down the question. Let's start. So, the first step is, <clears throat> what do you have to predict sales? Sales depends on years. As the years are increasing, do you notice that the sales is also increasing? With the increasing years, as the sale is increasing, which means that after 2007, 8, 9, the sale will keep increasing and that is what we have to predict. So, step one, this is not my x, I am going to create my own x. What is my x? Year minus the center of the year. Now, how do you take a center? Take a total. And take an average so I'm going to say 2002 plus 2003 plus 2004 plus 2005 sorry 2002 plus 2003 plus 2004 plus 2005 plus 2006 plus 2007 I'm so sorry 2002 2003, 2004, 2005, 
2006-2007 is 12-0-27 divided by how many periods is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 divided by 6. Now if you notice when I do that, the average works out to be 2004.5. You know why that happens? Because there are even number of periods here. When there are even number of periods, 2002-2007, there is no center left. The center is between 2004 and 2005, which is basically 2004.5. So what I will have to say is that my x is here minus 2004.5. Why? See, my idea is to make this 0. And this will only become 0 if and only if I subtract it from the mean. Any other subtraction will not make it 0. And if it does not become 0, I will have to use the indirect method, the long method, not the shortcut. I can't use the shortcut if this doesn't become 0. So let's start then. 2002 minus 2004.5 is a negative 2.5. This is going to be a negative 1.5. This is going to be a negative 0.5. This is going to be a positive 0.5. <coughs> Sorry. This is going to be a positive 1.5. And this is going to be a positive 2.5. What does the total work out to be? The total will obviously work out to be 0 because common sense the sum of the deviations from the mean is always and always 0. So this total always works out to be 0. If this works out to be 0, can I continue? Yes. They are asking you to predict for the next few years. So basic common sense again. If you notice 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5. 2008 will be 3.5. 9 will be 4.5. 10 will be 5.5 and so on. Nothing will change. Everything remains the same. So can I continue? Definitely yes. Will I continue? No. We are trying to make calculations simpler. You know what will happen when I find x, y? 100 into negative 2.5, 110 into 1.5, 115 into 0.5. Calculations are becoming slightly more difficult. And that is why whenever there is even period, and the center works out to be 2.2004.5. Doesn't come out to be a perfect value. Why didn't this happen before? Well, this didn't happen before because there were seven values. Seven values, the center is perfect. There were nine values. When there are nine values, the center is perfect. When there are odd values, the center is always perfect. When there are even values, the center is not perfect. So what are we going to do? If I continue like this, is it wrong? It is definitely not wrong. It is correct. There is nothing wrong with this. But what I am going to do is, I am not going to do this. Because like I said, I am trying to make calculations simpler, not difficult. But sir, then how else do you go about it? I will tell you. You will say let x be the year minus 2004.5. Agreed but multiply that by 2. Is that allowed? It is allowed. You shift it anyhow. Just remember one thing. In the prediction, use this. Don't use anything else. So, year, which is 2002, minus 2004.5 is basically negative 2.5. Multiply that by 2, it becomes negative 5. Multiply that by 2, it becomes negative 3. Multiply that by 2, it becomes negative 1, positive 1, positive 3, positive 5. What do you notice? The total is still 0. So, <clears throat> whenever the number of periods is odd, you will get a perfect center. When the number of periods is even, you will not get a perfect center because of which <clears throat> you will have to Multiply the deviations by 2 and then that will make the calculations easier. We continue and we say the first thing that I am going to find is xy and the second that I need to find is 
x square. So if I am finding x, y, 100 into negative 5 is negative 500. 110 into negative 3 is negative 330. 115 into 1, sorry, is negative 115. 120 into 1 is 120. 135 into 3, 135 into 3 is 405. And lastly, 140 into 5 is 700. <coughs> so, 100 into 5 is 500. 110 into 3 is 330. 115 into 1 is 115. 120 into 1 is 120. 135 into 3 is 405 and 140 into 5 is 700. I have to take a total. If I have to take a total, it is going to be 500 or let me take a reverse total. 700, 700 plus 405 plus 120 minus 115 minus 330 minus 500 is a total of 280. The last thing, I have very little place, but I am going to manage writing it here, x square. 5 square is <coughs> 25, 9, 1, 1, 9, 25. 25 plus 25 is 50, 60, 70. So this works out to be 70. The one thing that is left is the total of the sales. So let's do that quickly. 100 or basically this is my y 100 plus 110 plus 115 plus 120 plus 135 plus 140 is a total of 720 and we are done with finding all the sums let's come to substituting them into the formula what are we going to tell them well we are going to tell them that I want to find y is equal to a plus bx using what using the two formulas and one is sum of y is na plus b sum of x but I'm going to say but sum of x is 0 since sum of x is 0 sum of y is na plus 0 or na is sum of y or a is sum of y upon n or a is sum of y works out to be 720 divided by n which I always forget to write n is equal to 6 readings divided by 6 720 divided by 6 is going to be 6 ones are 6 twos are 0 120 720 divided by 6 is 120 this is the value of a Let's find the value of b. I'm finding it parallelly so that I don't waste too much. Place sum of x, y is equal to a sum of x plus b sum of x square. Sum of x, y has worked out to be 280. Sorry, let me write that first. Therefore, because sum of x is 0, but sum of x is 0. So therefore, sum of x, y is equal to 0 plus b sum of x square or b sum of x square is sum of x y or b is sum of x y divided by sum of x square or b is sum of x y is 280 divided by sum of x square is 70 280 divided by 70 is 4 so the value of this works out to be 4 I have A, I have B. Let me substitute into the formula. Y is equal to A plus BX. Y is equal to 120 plus B, which is 4X. So Y is equal to 4X plus 120. Now I have to find it for the next 5 years, if I am correct. So let this be. What is my equation? My equation is Y is equal to uh, 4x plus 120, 4x plus 120. They have stopped at the year 2007. 
Now see it's common sense. If you notice this is increasing by 2. So if this is 5, then 2008 will, uh, 2008 will be 7, not 6. The increment is by 2. You've multiplied it by 2. Here the increment is by 1, but you've doubled it, so the increment is by 2 here. So after 5 will come 7. So I'm going to say that for the year 2008, x is going to be year minus 2004.5 and then double it. So x is 2 into 2008 minus 2004.5. So x is 2 into 3.5 which is 7. So y will be 4 into 7 plus 120. So y will be 7 fours are 28 plus 120, y will be 2 plus 4, so 148. But in lakhs of units, therefore, for the year 2008, what was the question about? I'll tell you why I'm doing this, because I'm not going to do the entire question. Five years is too much to do. You all do it. For the year, the sales. So for the year the 2008, the sales are 148 but lakhs. Similarly now you will do for 2009. So x will become 9. 2010 x will become 11. 2012 x will become 2 increment. So what I am going to do is you have to write it completely. I am not going to write it. So therefore for the year 2009 x will become 9 2010 x will become 11 and 2011 x will increment by 2 13 and 2012 x will become 15 you substitute these into your equation and you will get the values for y i'm going to run through the solution that is there in the module and this is what they expect in your solution so Let's come to the solution in the module. These are values that we got 720, 70 and 280. If you notice, see, they have given you a very lengthy explanation. Time deviation from the middle of 2004 and 2005. Assume 6 months is equal to 1 unit. This is just too much stupidity written. What are you going to do? You are going to say straight that my year is not uh, my x is not year minus 2004.5 it is the double of 2004.5 is more than enough to be written that's it here they have used a shortcut and they have not written where the shortcut comes from I beg and plead please write down where the shortcut comes from like I said the question is going to be there for 6 marks or more for 6 marks or more you might as well write it down no? I will tell you how many marks carry how many uh, how much uh, time so according to that, you should give it that much time and then write it in as much detail as possible. Here, our answer for 2008 was 148 in lakhs and they also have 148 in lakhs and then it keeps increasing. Correct? And it's basic common sense. What is the value of your, uh, uh, where did it go? Yeah, what is the value of your B? 4. Correct? Now the only difference is 4, but your distance is doubled, no? So then here, it will not increment by 4, it will increment by 4, 2 is 8. So see 148 plus 8 is uh, 156, plus 8 is 164, plus 8 is 172 and plus 8 is 180. If you don't get it, it's okay. You put it into the equation and find it. And this is what they are expecting in the final answer. And that is going to be question number uh, 2 if I am correct. Yes. 2 down, 3 down sorry. Uh, I think two more to go. Uh, now the next questions are again, there is something different about the questions. So what I want you to do is make sure that you run through this, go through this very well from the module and the sheet that I am going to provide you, the solution itself is from the module only and then there is my solution. You can run through whatever solution you prefer make a proper running solution of all these questions no matter how the module has written it 
you will make sure that you make a proper running solution of your own you will have your own notebook that will have the solution for everything because there are mistakes in the module there are some done in a slightly different way i am doing them in a slightly different way so the module solution is different my solution is different the eventual result of the solutions is the same but make sure that you make an independent new notebook we will move on to the next questions in the next session